to talk to you tonight. Y'all ready for the word? You ready for the word? Amen. Preparing our hearts for him. We started a series again, preparing our hearts for him. Open your Bible, turn those smartphones into wisdom phones, turn those smart tablets into wisdom tablets. I've turned mine into it. I got the word in it. We're going to get right into it tonight. And this is part two of last week's message. Amen part two of last week's message. And God told me to take my time. If we finish tonight, we finish. But there are five points I want to give you, and we may just get to two or three of them tonight, and that's all right. The Holy Spirit's already told me, you can't rush. We want the Spirit of God to break out. How many want the Spirit of God to break out? Amen. Isaiah 60 says, arise, shine, for the light has come, amen, and it has risen upon you and me. And all of us here, amen? So we want to walk in that tonight, preparing our hearts. Say, Lord, prepare my heart for Jesus. Come on, Lord, prepare my heart for Jesus. I need it. I need it. Amen? I need my heart ready for him. Amen? He's ever living, making intercessions for me. Amen? I need the Holy Spirit to be able to to touch me when he needs to touch me, to convict me. How many know you can fight conviction? How many know the Holy Spirit's a gentleman? And he's not going to keep on, if you put up a resistance, he's not going to keep on banging on the door. He's going to say, okay, invite me in. Invite me in. God wants to invite you in. Amen? So let's look with me to Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. I'm going to need you to stand up. At home, I'm going to need you to stand up. We're going to read the Word. And I really believe as we read the Word, the Word's going to read us. Amen. You know how people are trying to read folk? How many of the Holy Ghost can read you like nobody else can? Well, I don't know why we let the world take that from us. Amen. The, ho- the, the, the Holy Ghost will read us like no one else. Amen. So Psalms chapter 1, verses uh, 1 through 3 and verse 6. Verses 1 through 3 and verse 6. And I want you to get this in your spirit. Amen. And I, I'm talking about the blessed. I te- I'm not even focusing on the wicked because that's not you. Amen. If you're listening by phone, you're not called to be wicked. You're called to be blessed. So if you're in wickedness, we're calling you out of it tonight. In the name of Jesus. Get on the good foot, as, get on the good foot like that theologian uh, James Brown used to say, and get where you need to be in God. Amen? Amen. Psalms 1. Let's read. Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, And favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor sits down to rest in the seat of the scoffers or ridiculers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, his precepts and his teachings, he habitually meditates. Everybody say habitually habitually meditates day and night. It's a, it's a great habit. You got to have the word even when you don't want the word. I'm tired, but I need the word. You're like an addict because you habitually are meditating on the word. Say, Lord, give me a desire to crave your word, to crave your word. It's inside of you. Amen. How many of the Bible says we will know the truth and the truth will set us free? Amen. Let's keep going. Amen. Stop asking me all these questions so we can read this. Amen. Verse, verse uh, 3. It says what? And he will be like a tree. Who's he? Me. That's you. And he, let's read again. And he will be like a tree firmly planted and fed by streams of water which yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither and in whatever he does he prospers and comes to maturity from the, for the Lord knows and fully approves the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. Hallelujah. Open your hands up to pray. Let's open up in prayer. Father, we just thank you right now. We honor you for your presence, God. We say, God, that this is your day. This is your day. This is your night. This is your movement. And we yield to your flowing of what you're breaking in us and breaking through us, and we yield to your world and your way. Howard sits down. Holy Spirit, speak like only you can. You have a way, Holy Spirit, of speaking to every person individually like they're the only one in the room. I need you to do that on the night. They don't need to see Howard. 
that need to see your love and your grace. In Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated if you can. We want to prepare our hearts for him. We want to prepare our hearts for him. This whole series is about preparing our hearts, which I believe 26 days, give or take a day, from Resurrection Sunday. And guess what? I, again, we, it should be a, a preparation as we are recommitting in this, as the quarter ends in March, and we're getting ready to go into a new quarter. Amen? If you need to fast, fast. If you need to pray, pray. If you need to give, give. Amen? Do what God's called you to do. You say, why did you mention what? Fast and prayer, giving. That's that three-fold breakthrough. Amen? Don't, these, these, this teaching is, is, is a continual thing. Amen? That we're called to walk in. Amen? Let's, let's uh, I want to have a spiritual checkup. How many know from time to time we got to we got we to check up sometimes, amen? And once a year for some of us. If, how many times do you go to the dentist? What's a good time? What? Every what? I can't hear you. Every six months, amen? If you got something going up there, every three months, amen? If you got gum disease, but if you're if you, everything all right, every six months, it's good to get checkups. How many know it's good to go if, with your car? Do you just drive your car and never check anything? It's good to get what? Checkups. What type of checkups do you need for your car? Oil checkups, right? Tire checkups, right? What else? Brake checkup. Are y'all with me? And checkups are good. Sometimes. Why are you saying this? Because sometimes we look at checkups as something. Uh, I don't like that. I don't like order. I don't like this. I don't like that. How many is not about what we like? Gravity is real, whether I like it or not. Amen. If I get up and wave my hand and says I'm going to fly and jump off this stage, what's going to happen? I want to come right down because gravity does not discriminate. It doesn't matter whether I'm white, black, orange, purple. It doesn't matter. It's a law. And it's the same thing. There's certain spiritual laws that God has put in place to keep his people in line with him. Amen. And how many know his word will never fail? His word will never pass away. Amen. So let's get right into this. We're talking about getting our minds. Everybody say my mind. My mind in check with God. My mind in check with God. I want to talk to you about five steps to keep your mind refreshed in the word of God. Say my mind is God's mind. Let this mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2 and 5. Amen? God says that we should have his mind. You know, maybe you too will benefit from these steps. I know you will. They've benefited me. But I want to, I want to talk about this before I do this. I want to give you a little analogy. And I may need somebody to help me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because some of us, you know, we got saved. And, you know, when we were in the world, we knew how to fight. We knew how to fight. But we get saved and we lose all of our, come on, you can come on, line me up, Brother Ace, come on. I need a corner man. Come on. Go and pull him up on my arm. Pull it up. Yeah, there you go. And then wrap that around. Guess what? Okay? So now I'm ready. Ready, right? So some of us, we know how to fight in the world. We, can, we used to, we cuss you out. We'd be the best one in cussing you out. We knew how to dodge that, that blow there, amen, knock you out with that right, with that hook. Are y'all with me? Jab you to death because we won't think about life. Now, I want you to take that same fight that you have from the world and use and apply it in the word of God. Put your gloves down. Raise your spiritual gloves. What's your spiritual gloves? Help me take these off, bro. Take them off. Because you got to be, see, you got to be willing. Sometimes you need help to take off the fleshly gloves. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but the evil powers and principalities, right? It's the Bible says, Paul says in Corinthians, guess what? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. They're not fleshly, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. So our prayer now is that talking to daddy, neology. Speaking the word of God, declaring the rhema word, the Bible said it's like a two-edged sword coming out of our mouth, speaking it over our lives, over our families, over our children, over our situations, over our finances, over our future, declaring the word of God, prophesying our destiny according to his will. Amen. That's the give God a hand about our, amen. So we got to do that. 
Thank you, Brother Ace. Amen. We got to do that. So let's look at the first thing we need to do. Hallelujah. Say, I'm going to get my fight back. Come on. I heard one person. I'm going to get my fight back. Paul said, fight the, the good fight of faith. Amen. He said, fight the good fight of faith. He continually related to wrestling because gladiator wrestling and the art of wrestling was big in Greek culture. And so he understood that they understood that. And he said, don't lose your fight because you get saved. We just fight differently now. We have that. How many of you have to have a, have a level of tenacity not to give up the first time you see a sign of trouble? You get punched. Oh, boy, I, just, I better get out of here. This ain't my profession. Are you with me? No, there has to be a fight. Oh, devil, that was a good one. But guess what? I'm about to drop something on you. Thanks be unto God that always causes me to triumph. If God be for me, what? No one can stand against me. Oh, let me give you something else. Nothing, this is, let me remind you, nothing will, say, you said I'm no good. You said that I can never recover. God, God says in his word, guess what? Nothing will separate me from the love of God. Oh, you say, okay, you, you, what you say, what, 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 that, 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 that my decisions were so bad that it messed everything up? Well, God's word says in Romans 8, all things are working together. This say all things are good. It says all things are working together for my good because I love the Lord and I am the called according to his purposes. Can you see why we need a fight in God's word? Amen? And this is easy lifting. This ain't heavy lifting. All you have to do is declare the word. Amen? Oh, this is so hard, Pastor. No, it's not. All that moaning is hard. All that crying is hard. Are you with me? This is the easy lifting. Amen? Let's keep going. Are y'all getting something out of this? Five steps. Are y'all ready for the first step? Okay. You're going to take these. You're going to use them, right? I can't hear you. You're going to use them, right? Amen. Okay. Are, are you going to use them at home? Okay. I hear you back there. Okay. Okay. Step one. First thing you got to do, ask the Lord to guard and direct your mind. Come on, just real simple. Lord, guard and direct my mind. My mind is the place of my intellect, my reasoning, and my intentions. Just because you think about something doesn't mean that you got to meditate on it. You got to learn to cast down vain imaginations image of nations, every picture and image, because God will speak in our mind through images. Oh, are you with me? And guess what? In those images, you got to tear them down. Well, this is going to be like the last thing. No, it's not. I cancel that in the name of Jesus. Guess what? I'm going to learn from this. Are y'all with me? My behavior begins in my mind, and my mind is where spiritual transformation happens. So if you understand that spiritual transformation starts in your mind, because your spirit has already been renewed. Your spirit is saved, amen? But your mind, which is your mind, will, and emotions, are being transformed, amen? And most of it starts with your mind. Are you with me? And then guess what? Your mind can control your emotions, amen? Now, a lot of us, we're used to being led with our emotions. Well, I feel this. I feel that. Now, the Bible doesn't say be led with your. It says be renewed in the spirit of your mind. How many knows a lot of times I don't feel like doing the will of God? So it can't be about a feeling. I can't wake up and I don't feel like loving my wife. Love is a commitment. Love is a decision. Love is a mindset. Are you with me? Because I watch you. <laughs> for time for time, I, I watch anything done with love on TV. I just want to see what they're saying, what the world is saying. And they make it so flighty. I love you. I love you. I love you especially in these reality shows. And then the next episode, I hate you. Hey, get out of my face. You're the worst thing. I'm like, and you say, well, but that's TV, Pastor. But when I look at the ratings of these shows, these are the top shows that are feeding people. And so they begin to get what you watch, you become. So you see these same behaviors showing up in counseling amongst believers. Are y'all with me? Because guess what? We're not getting renewed in the spirit of our mind. Proverbs chapter 23 and 7. Watch this. For as what? As he thinketh in his heart, what? So is he in his behavior. That's the Amplified Version. As a man thinketh, so is he, is in the King James. 
The object of my regular thinking will determine how my days, years, and ultimately my life plays out. Everything starts in the mind. Say that with me. Everything starts in my mind. One more time. Everything starts in my mind. We must simply ask for the Lord's protection, direction, and oversight of my mind. That's why you got to watch it if you're around people that are speaking negative. I tell, I tell husbands, if you're around people that are speaking negative about women and wives, guess what? Then you come home and you start looking at your wife funny. If you're around ladies around women that are talking negatively about men, ain't no good men out there. I never find a good man. Then the guess thing was you looking at all the men funny. When a good one comes, you wouldn't even recognize it. Because you got bitterness in your heart and God's trying to send you a good thing. You can't even receive it because you've already declared there ain't no good thing out there. Are you with me? It's important to keep a healed heart. It's important to stay uh, pliable. I, sometimes I've, I've gone, amen, not where I'm at now, but in, in times past I've had, I remember when we were starting a church, I was at a particular barbershop I would go to, and they'd be like, oh, these women are crazy. you never understand. i say, not my wife. 14 barbers said, not my wife. Y'all got the wrong woman. I can't help it. You made a mistake. I got the right one. God says I can learn to understand my wife. Are y'all with me? They look at me, well, what are you talking about? Then they say, well, what do you do? I read the word. I study the word. And it would change the conversation. And then some other men would say, yeah, I got a good one too. I don't know what they're talking about. Sometimes it just takes one person to be bold and speak truth. For everybody to join the bandwagon, will you be that one? Or will you be that one in the cut just like, oh, yeah, well, I know. I'll say it to myself. And then all that foolishness gets in your spirit. And you come home and you're looking at your spouse all crooked. Are y'all with me? Oh my, oh, you're kid, all my kids are bad. Then you wonder why your kids are bad. Speak life. Everybody say speak life over your family. Speak life over your situation. Speak life over your job. Speak life over your coworkers. Speak life over your students. Speak life. Everybody say, speak life. Speak life. Amen. Over your spouse. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Are y'all getting something out of this? It says, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its what? Superficial values and customs. I know this whole world's passing away. Are you with me? One thing, one thing's in. I remember when bell bottoms were in, then they went out. And straight leg. Went in. And now bell, but then bell bottoms came back for a little bit. Now you got skinny jeans coming in and skinny pants. Are y'all with me? And this is some of the same things we wore in the 7th. They just modified a little bit. Are you with me? And so what is it? It's always changing, but pretty much still the same. Superficial. Phony. But be what? Transform and progressively change as you ma mature spiritually by what? The renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes. Say, Lord, put your hand on your heart. Say, Lord, change me from the inside out. Why? So that you may what? Prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. See, understand this. Can I give you a remedy? Look at this. From now on, I will do my best to start my day with a simple prayer. Real simple prayer. Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, keep my mind firmly set where you want it to be focused today. Now, you can do any version of that. You can do that in your own words. But I would encourage you, set your mind focused on God. Amen? Guess what? Nobody can make, your mind, make you mad when your mind is set on God. Oh, you say, oh, you always making me mad. No, you made yourself mad because you lost your focus. Focus on God. Peter began to sink when he lost his focus. Remember when he got off the boat and he was walking in faith? He said, Jesus, I'm walking, I'm walking. Then he looked at his feet. He looked at, he lost focus. He took his eyes off of Jesus. We're the same way. When we take our eyes off of Jesus and his word, we lose focus. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love you very much in the Lord. But guess what? You got to keep that focus in Christ. 
Keep that focus in Christ. Amen? Y'all ready for point two? You ready for point two? Here's point two. Recognize the source of self-focused and self-defeating thoughts. Recognize the source. Who do you think the source is? You think that's Jesus? It's Satan. It's from darkness. It's evil. What's evil? Living backwards. Literally. Are you with me? Are you tired of living backwards? Are you tired of walking in evil? It's time to live and move forward in God. Amen? And to walk in love. Given that my behavior begins in my mind and my mind is where spiritual transformation happens. Amen? It is, it's no surprise that the adversary wants what? Mess with my thinking. It must be a favorite and first attempt to distract and disarm Christians, and it usually works. Say, not, not anymore, because I found you out. Amen? I've experienced in periods of mental oppression. How many have ever experienced that before? And that seems almost physical, like even you can get sick because you feel like you're fighting the devil himself. A feeling of heaviness accompanies my self-defeating thoughts. Oh, you're not going to make it. It's almost, it's, it's all over. Most of the time I realize that I'm engaged in a spiritual battle of some sort, but I cannot immediately free myself of it. This is what I got to do. And this is, this is so true. You can't, you can't, don't, you, once you, you have to realize that it's not you. Amen? Sometimes we're so unforgiving of ourselves, we'll spend the whole day beating ourselves up. Why am I feeling like this? Oh, I was in the Word all day. I shouldn't be feeling, man, this, wow. Ah! And we make it about us. Turn you and say, neighbor, I love you very much, but it's not about you. Amen? It used to be a song that we sung that, that we, and, and our praise and worship team used to sing back when we were at the ground. He said, it's not about us. It's not about you, but it's about Jesus. Are y'all with me? It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. Here's what you got to do. You ready for it? You got to pray, confess, and read God's word. Did you hear me? Pray. Get into neology, the study of prayer. You have to, what do you mean by that? Read prayers? No, talk to God. Communicate. Say, Lord, I'm weak right now. I feel beaten down. I need your help. God will meet you right where you are. Then confess. Confess where you are. Then read God's word. I pray some more. It should be noted that in my case, this is not, I'm not talking about clinical depression. If I am depressed, I would seek uh, medical treatment. I would seek, wait, and you say, well, Pastor, why are you saying this? Because sometimes there's a bad stigma of this in the church. And you need, how many know we need some therapists? Pastors need therapists. Members need therapists. Sometimes, Sometimes you need somebody to talk through what you're going through. And a lot of times when you're in therapy, you'll figure out if you're, really, if you're being open, the Holy Spirit, if you begin to listen to yourself, the answer is already inside of you. And what a good therapist does will, 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 will hear the answer in you and show you that it was already there. Are y'all with me? I didn't say just put you on drugs. Are you with me? I'm talking about a good therapist can do. Amen? Now, if you have a chemical imbalance, that's all right if you have to get on medication. I'm not trying to be negative about that either. But what I'm saying is sometimes we need somebody to talk things through with us. Amen? And declare the word. Now, eventually my mind is encumbered, but it's not because I thought positively enough or talked myself out of it. It didn't come from positive thinking. What I'm doing is trying to walk you through my process. And this process now happens in seconds. Are you with me? Before when I started out, it would, be, it would be minutes, sometimes hours. But as you begin to walk in this thing and begin to practice, guess what? Your faith, amen? And let me, you, you see that it goes faster. That feeling of heaviness comes. I remember when my wife was diagnosed with cancer. And I was being all strong to her. I was like, yeah, yeah. I had to go for a walk, saints. Right there on Hamby Road, right off figure, had to go for a walk. And when I was there, I began to confess. I began to pray. I began to confess. Lord, I'm scared. And I saw the devil start showing me. Image. Right I was praying. And this was like seconds. I had barely walked. This sounds like, it's going to sound like a lot. I was getting, because my, my, you know, I'm a visionary. So I'm immediately seeing myself raising my kids by myself. 
preaching by myself. My wife, I mean, just boom, the devil just, how many know the, 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 the gifting that God gave you, the devil will try to use against you? And so he was giving me visions, boom, 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 boom. And I was like, Lord, I can't take this. I remember just, I remember on hand, hadn't got far from me. I was like, Lord, I can't take this. God, I need you to come through. God says, hey, remember the prophecies you had that y'all would travel the world together? Remember the prophecies that you had that you will preach together and, and you're going to raise your kids together? And it got began to remind me of all the things. This is like milliseconds. The Holy Spirit just began to drop this in my spirit as I cried out to him. He says, now begin to confess the word over her. She wasn't around. I'm just by myself. She will live and not die. This sickness is not under death, but to the glory of God. Are you with me? I began to speak healing over her. And when I got back from that walk, I was so fired up. Are you with me? Because I was able, she was, all, she was full of faith. She's like, oh, this, she warned me uh, 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 several months in advance that, uh, no, it was a year in advance that she was going to be, uh, have a sick, she had a dream that she was going to have a sickness that was under death, and that I had to stay in faith. And it's like, you know, even I was beating myself up about that in a second. You warned me. I'm not ready. The Lord says, it's not about you, Howard. Don't make this about you. This is about me and what I'm trying to do. Why do we try to make it about ourselves? Because we're so me-centered. We got to make it about him. Lord, you're bringing me through this test so you can make a testimony. Say that with me. Say, Lord, you're bringing me through this test so you can build a testimony. Come on, say it with me. You're bringing me through this test so you can build a testimony. How many of God has to build a testimony in you? Are you with me? We say make, but really he's building it in you because others can come in and live in what he's built when it's a testimony built by God. Are you with me? Others can come in and get strength from what you've been through, and they don't have to go through it. Or if they're in the midst of going through it, they get strength from what you went through. That's why the Bible says we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, Revelations 12, I believe, verse 24. Amen? Got to get that word inside of you. Amen. Then recognize the enemy and fight him with God's power and with the scriptural truth that you know. Are you with me? See where that thought is coming from? So this is a spirit of confusion. This is not me. And guess what? We're not having confusion in my house. Couples, and you, can, you don't have to raise your hand. Just think about it. I know sometimes it's like we, we can be having a great day, and we just start arguing about something that don't even make sense. And we don't even want to argue. And then you try to get right, and you argue some more. You try to get right, and you argue some more. And it's what? It's a, I call it it's a spirit of confusion. Are you with me? Tell them I got to pull away. I say, honey, let's, hey, give me a time out. You just take a break. Pull away. Say, Lord, I rebuke the spirit of confusion in me. I'm not talking about it in her. So that's your problem. You think the other person is the problem. Take care of yourself first. I rebuke the spirit of confusion in me. And, Lord, you've called me to walk in agreement. See, let me tell you something. You always can see the other person's problem. The thing is, can you see what's in your life? Can you see the inner me inside of you? I bet you if I ask you right now, you give you 10 things, your friend, your spouse, whatever, you give me 10 things wrong with them, but can you find 10 things wrong about yourself that God is working on you right now? The Bible says get that moat out of your eye before you try to take it out that log. I, I mean, get that log out of your eye before you try to take the little speck out of your neighbor's eye. Amen? So introspection is important. Amen? And that's where that meditation and getting the word. So uh, I think when you're having conflict, and we're getting back to this, I guess the Holy Spirit is taking us there. When you're having conflict in your home, it's so good to pull away. It could be family members. It could be with your children. Guess what? Pull away. Get in, get, to not pull away and be mad and, and simmer. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. Pull away and give it to God and say, Lord, I give it to you. I can't handle this. The whole situation is making me angry. I'm not thinking right. Now, Holy Spirit, I, I confess that I'm too weak to handle this by myself. And then wait there. Don't just get up. The Holy Spirit will begin to reveal to you what needs to happen, what needs to be corrected, what needs to be rebuked or bound in the situation. And speak that thing. And then guess what? Declare what you want to happen. God, I declare this is a loving relationship. I declare that my children love God with all their heart. I declare that, God, they're going and believing in the things of God. I, I declare that they're full of hope and grace and love and mercy. The kids may have been fighting all day, but you declaring it over them. 
Are you with me? And watch God make changes. Amen? I'm trying to see if I should wait right here. This is a lot right. Are you, did you, have you gotten something out of this? I'm going to give you one more. We'll start this point and we'll finish it up next time. Because here's the thing. I don't want to just give you a whole bunch for the sake of getting a whole bunch. I want you to, everybody say mastery. See, it's something about, we're in a, we're in a knowledge or information age. We like, just give it to me, give it to me. Just give it to me. Then we don't utilize it. But God's not into just being, he, having information. He wants you to have revelation. And revelation means that guess what? You see it and you see yourself in it so you can have application. See, information is no good if you're not getting revelation and you're not getting application. The church, in many cases, is just getting full with information. We've had more teaching. We got enough teaching in the U.S. We could teach the whole world about Jesus. Are y'all with me? All throughout. But guess what? What are we doing with it? So we need revelation from God so that we can have application and make a difference. And so you don't even have to speak. People can look at your life and get changed. Are y'all with me? Here's the next one. Next point. Replace. What was it? Who remembers what was the first point? Ask the Lord to guard and direct your mind. What was the second point? Recognize the source of self-focused and self-defeating thoughts. It's not from you, so stop beating up yourself. Some of us are just beating ourselves up. We're just taking our own hand and just bam, 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 knocking ourselves out. Devil don't got to knock you out. You already knocked yourself out. You wonder, why am I hurting? Stop hitting yourself. Some of us have been, hear me now, some of us are addicted to the drama. Some of us are used to cutting ourselves. Why are we good? Because you can control that. When things get out of control, you want to control. Because this whole world is about control. So I create drama that I think I can control. Because I'm scared of what may come in the future. And it's all a level of not trusting God. Are y'all with me? So we beat ourselves up. Because then I can make this pain. I can control this pain. I know I need ice for this pain. I can fix this pain. But here's the thing you don't get. God's going to bring the trials that he's already ordained for you. But if you're self-inflicting, you won't be at your, at, at, in a place of wholeness to, 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 to get, receive the healing from the trial that's coming. Are y'all with me? Say, neighbor, I love you. But stop beating yourself up. It's only one you. It's only one you. And guess what? You're not called to be perfect. You're called to be perfected. You're not called to be perfect. You're called to be perfected. What do you mean? What's the difference? You're called to come into a place of maturity in him. Are y'all with me? My God, if I, if I, if I listened to what the devil said about me, I would have given up 25 years ago. <laughs> Are y'all with me? I would have given up 30, well, it's more like 35 years ago, amen? But I mean, guess what? Every time the devil shows you, well, you're not this. That's right, but, my, but, my, but Jesus is, and I'm covered in his blood. And I, guess what? If I focus on him, I'm becoming more like him every day. The Bible says the word is like a mirror. When I stare at the word, I become more like it every day. So devil, get out my face. I got to get my stare on. Are y'all with me? And I got to stare at my word until I get changed. Are you with me? The old folks, you say, I got to wait till my change comes. I'm, I'm looking to be a butterfly, amen? Now understand this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me get back to where we were. Third point, you ready? Replace self-focused thinking with what? God-focused mindset. After praying for the Lord to protect my mind and recognizing the enemy, I have a choice. Say, I have a choice. See, one thing, the enemy will make you feel helpless. You're not helpless. Now, if you say, well, pastor, I am helpless. You just don't know me. I'm helpless. Now, I got a scripture for you on that. The Bible says, guess what? The people's Bible says God helps those who help themselves. That's not what God's word say. That's what the people say. That's first, that's first um, 
uh, 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 Hezekiah, uh, second chapter, fifth verse. And if you know the Bible, there ain't no Hezekiah. Amen? No book of Hezekiah. Amen? But God's word says in Psalms, he helps those who have no helper, who are helpless. So if you're helpless, guess what? Stand on his word. Have a, train your brain to concentrate on things of God or it will be consumed by the things of this world. Are you with me? Now understand this, the focus on God requires some work, okay? It requires work. If I don't take purposeful action to set my mind on Jesus Christ, then I'm allowing my mind to go anywhere it wants to go, and it's nowhere good. Amen? You got to decide, I know myself, so even when I'm fully confident of God's love and care, I still must decide what I will and will not think about. It's a choice. It's a choice. Everybody say it's a choice. Amen. I'm going to give, can I give you one scripture? I'm going to give you one scripture and we're going to stop there and we'll take it up from this point. This is a good place to take, take it because what I want to pray is for self-sabotaging behavior. Some of you remember I did a series about two years ago called Overcoming Self-Sabotaging Behavior. I love saying that word. It's like sabotage, Sabotaging behavior. Amen. And it, I think we did it like eight weeks. I planned to do it just two weeks. It ended up being an eight-week series. You go on YouTube and go back and look at it. But we dealt with how we destroy ourselves. And then I think that another year I did it over, but I called it uh, Hard Knock Life. Overcoming a hard knock life. Because sometimes we, we, we're knocking ourselves out with wrong decisions, disobedience to God, and we're wondering why we're not getting any further. Amen. But here's the scripture. You ready for it? Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Write that down. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. On next week, I'm going to give you several scriptures, but how many all you need is one scripture to knock the devil out? You don't need 10 scriptures. You just need one that you need to learn and meditate on and get to that place in God. Amen? Here we go. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. It says, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are what? Above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Now get this. Everybody say, mindset. Here it goes. It says, Paul says, set your minds on things that are above, on things that are not on this earth. Philippians says, whatever things are good, whatever things are pure, whatever things of good report, focus on those things. Amen? Stand to your feet, everybody. We're going to seek God right now. Amen? We want to let go all the stinking thinking. Amen. Generate something maybe generationally. Maybe some things that may have come from your past. Maybe false humility. You say, what is false humility? You're acting humble, but you really ain't. You're really scared. You're really scared, but you can hide behind your humility because then you have to, ha won't have to deal with your fear. And you look good to people on the outward, but really you're scared. You're scared to make that first move. You're scared to step out on what God's called you to do. God has not called you to walk in fear. He's not called you to walk in doubt and unbelief. Think about it. Every time you step out in God, God's always been there for you. He's always begin to rehearse all the times that God was with you when you stepped out, even when you weren't even perfectly right with God. He's still back you because you're his child. Think about some of you that have children, how you love your children no matter what. Because they're your what? Child. Now, multiply that love by a million times, a million times, a million times, a million, because that's how God is. It's an infinitum. It's beyond what you could even fathom with this pea brain of ours. I don't care how smart you are. He loves you. He just loves you. He loves you. No matter what you've done, no matter what you're going through, those of you that may be at home on YouTube or become church, God loves you. I think a study that went out by, by Barter Group several years ago, about, about eight or nine years ago, it astounded me. I think it said 85% of pastors don't think that their love for people in the ministry don't realize that they're loved by God. It's a problem when the leaders have a problem with the love of God. Because if the leaders do, the people are. Turn, turn the daddy, 
just where you are, if he's up to you, to me, he's in. Say, Lord, I receive your love. It's just about receiving it. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter what you've been through. God loves you, and he doesn't give up. He doesn't matter about your past, your history, your failures, your victories. None of that matters. It's all filthy rags to him. He doesn't matter how much you prayed today or how much you didn't pray, how much you fasted, how much you didn't fast, how much you gave or how much you didn't give. God loves you. Now, Father, we just stand in the embrace of your love right now. We yield to your will and your way. We shake off, God, fear. We shake off doubt. We shake off unbelief, anything that would hold us bound. Your word says perfect love casts out all fear, not some, all fears. So we embrace your love. We embrace the finished work of Christ that you did over 2,000 years ago. You saw us before we could even see ourselves. We were on your heart and in your mind before the foundations of the world of redeeming this mankind, this womankind. We love you, God. We receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to live a, a life of victory and strength. Lord, Help us not to give up on you. I know it even sounds funny. Holy Spirit, just help us not to give up on the Father. When we get weak, remind us. Bring back to our remembrance all the things that he's done in our life. The testimonies. How he's invested in us. Change us from the inside out. And Lord, help us to forgive ourselves. Deliver us from self-beatings. Self-abuse. And help us to put on our spiritual oxygen mask so that we can receive the freshness and the breath of the Spirit of God in your word that we may embrace and be transformed for eternity Lord this is our prayer Lord this is our prayer just raise your hand and say dear Lord come into my life afresh and anew in Jesus name heal the broken places Heal the broken places right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. Amen. If that's you, give God a hand clap. Come on, if you believe that, that God is doing something even at home, just begin to praise him. Just begin to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your praise is a weapon. Hallelujah. 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 Next week we'll take up right where we left off. Amen. This is a fun series. Preparing our hearts for him. Amen. Okay, amen. We're at 26 days, give or take a day. Next week will be 19 days for Resurrection Sunday. And I'm just looking for God to just raise us up in a greater way. I'm looking for our relationships to thrive our friendships to thrive, our marriages to thrive, our co-worker relationships to thrive. I'm looking for a year of thriving. God says we're going to come out better than how we came. Amen? So I want you to remove all the fear, cast off all the doubt, and keep speaking that word over yourself. That guess my best is yet to come. God is doing great things in me and through me. Amen? Hallelujah. Got some praise. Come on. If you believe that, give God some praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Spirit break out. Why? Why do we need God's way? Well, what was your thought in even choosing this song, Brother Asaph, for us? 
Nothing deep, just what God put on your heart. Come on. Just the reality of um, how it's the, the words that we sing and the words that we declare, anything that comes out of our mouth is, is powerful, whether it be for life or death. And so, we, you know, this is a declaration. It's, it's, it's saying that our Father, all of heaven knows your name. It's Come on. Singing of his faithfulness, his, his, his fame. Yeah. You know, which his, his fame is throughout the entire universe. Yeah. Right? And so um, this is also a declaration song where we're breaking walls. Amen. I don't know about you guys, but I know that there's been, uh, that God's been trying to break, well, he's been breaking down just various walls. That, yes. You know, of, of, of resistance. Yes. You know, and, and, and whether it's resistance in believing him in certain areas. Yeah, yeah. He wants to break those walls down. And so that is what we're doing. So he's breaking these walls and making us more dependent on him. He's literally arrested us. Yes. With Corona. Yep. With quarantine. With all these different things. You say, I know that came from the devil, but how many know God is still in control? And he's using this to slow the whole world down to show that you need me. Medicine can do but so much. Vaccine can do but so much. But at the end of the day, we need God. Amen. So we need God's spirit to break through. And Absolutely. all of heaven knows his name. Yeah. It, 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 and I hope you heard what he said. It's a declaration. Yes, amen. Sometimes when you're going through, you have to begin to declare what the word of God says. Yes. So it's not about a performance tonight. It's about a declaration over your situation. It's about a declaration yes. over your family. It's about a declaration yes. over your job and over your children you're declaring what God says so make a joyful noise whether you're in the sanctuary whether you're in your home or in your car declare what God says amen amen amen, amen. amen. hallelujah faithful and a shall got it go for it hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah let's do this thank you Lord amen Come on, give God some praise. Spirit, break out. Spirit of God, we just invite you to break out in all of those areas, Lord God, just we, that we just mentioned in our families, Lord. Systems and things that are out of our control. Yes. We give it to you. We yes. invite you yes. to break yes. out. Yes, in yes. Jesus, mighty name. Yes, yes. Come on. Come on. Let this place here up and please in your ear. Come on, I dare you to stop on the devil's head. Come on, come on. Come on. All of heaven knows your name. Sing loud. All of heaven, come on. Let this place here up with praise in your ear. I hear it. Come on. Declare this earth right here. Come on. The sound of heaven touching you. Come on. Come on. Come on. All of heaven rose your name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let this place hear up with praise. Can you hear it? Yes, Lord. The sound of heaven touching earth. The sound of heaven touching earth. Yes, Lord.
sing. Spirit, break out. Let's sing together. Break our walls down. Break our walls down. Spirit, break out. Spirit, break out. Heaven, come down. Heaven, come down. Let's sing it again. Spirit. Spirit, break out. Break our walls down. Spirit. Spirit, break out. Heaven, come down. Heaven, come down. Our Father, all of heaven roars your name. Sing. Let this place erupt with praise. Can you hear it? A sound of heaven touching earth. Sound. A sound of heaven touching earth. Our Father, all of heaven roars your name. Sing louder. Let this place erupt with praise. Can you hear it? A sound of heaven touching earth. A sound of heaven touching earth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just bless Hallelujah, you in God. this place tonight, Lord God. Come on, give us we some praise. We thank you, Lord God, that just like Paul and Silas were in that prison cell and saying praises unto you, yes, that Lord. you tore those walls down and you set them free. And so we thank you for the power of praise, oh God. Yes. And we thank you for breaking heaviness and breaking all oppression off of our lives. Yes, God. And we thank you for all of the victory belongs to you in yes. Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some more praise. Amen. Even at home. Come on, go ahead and give him some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God.